Mary's Workshop. My name is Anne Marie and I like to make things. If you like to make things or just like to watch people make things or be around other people who make things, please like, subscribe, and share. This is my July 2022 makes. It was a great month. There were some great challenges. There was Ankara Week, but Ankara Week, um, there was color blocking. There were so many things. So let's get into it. This is one of my love makes for my third daughter, Melly Mel. And this is McCall's 7757. I made you a, I'll show you the line drawing. Um, we had gone shopping to Banana Republic and she bought some beautiful things, but one of the things that they had was a bandeau top in a beautiful orange uh, uh, creamsicle color, and, but it was 80 bucks. <laughs> and I was like, girl, I can make that for you. So she went back, she took it back. She got it on sale, on a great sale, but I thought I'd make her some others. So I made her one in this wonderful cinnamon. Now, the only thing is, I think I would make this again for her and I would make the front longer because I think that's what the style that the Banana Republic had. It was a little longer. So first time, there are many opportunities to make more and I will morph it accordingly. I also made it in black because I thought black goes with everything. You go with jeans, um, uh, khaki, white, any color. So I made the black as well. But like I said, next time I'm gonna make it even longer. Um, my next three makes are my commitment to the Dress a Girl Around the World organization. Um, I decided I would make two dresses a month because they're very simple to make. I always have extra leftover fabric. And I bought the pattern from their organization, very inexpensive and um, easy to make. I also bought these little name tags um, which they require you to put on one pocket of each one of the dresses. So, this one is one of the ones I made. It is a medium, they don't have large. Um, the picture I showed you was small. This is medium, and it's made from leftover fabric from my daughter's dress and hopefully I'll put it over here of her wearing her full-size dress in Italy. And, um, but there was enough left over to make two dresses. And I really enjoyed going through my scrap pile to find a material that would bring out the sunflowers. So I ended up with this light green grass-like um, fabric that I have used in my quilts as grass. And I found this light, yellow rickrack in my stash. They're wonderful um, uh, stash busters, scrap busters, and I encourage you to participate. This is the pink, and this is the light blue. This is a light blue, lightweight denim. Very simple, there's just a little piece of elastic at the front and these ties to make it adjustable for every young lady. Um, I did not put the ruffle on these, um, on the medium because I think it would make it too long. Uh, this is a pink and white Oxford cloth and the same light yellow Rick Rag, okay? So, and I made another pink one, so uh, I was watching a movie. <laughs> so um, that, that for, the, for this month, um, I made three of these. Now this next pattern is New Look 6355. This is not in the pattern books. I've had this for, if not years, maybe decades. Um, I have not looked it up to see if it's still available. New Look, remember, it only goes up to 16, 18 at the most, maybe 20. Um, and this was at a time when I was within this range, but in celebration of Encore Week, I had had this pattern cut out. I modified it, I made it larger. I had it cut out and Encore Week came and I pulled all my Encore fabric out that was already pre-cut in my UFOs 
and tried to make them this month. So this is one of the first ones. Alrighty. So this pattern is a relaxed sheath dress. And I'm sure I'll be showing you in its full glory in another part of the video. It's a relaxed sheath dress, no zipper, very easy to make. I made it in this unbelievable fabric. I did, of course, I did make it reversible. <laughs> but um, the one side is so fabulous. Do you really need the other side? The other side is that Indian cotton that I got from Cloth World. That's how old it is. Um, that was uh, that was the name that Joanne Fabric used to be. And so I lined it in this Indian cotton so that it was um, palatable to wear in Jamaica because it gets hot here um, uh, most of the year. And so if I was going to be wearing this to church or an event, I wanted to stay nice and cool. So that was the relaxed um, dress. And then this is the jacket, which I will show in its full glory over here somewhere around here <laughs> and um, the only addition I made I added this really fabulous button I've been dying to use I did not make a buttonhole I did the Marc Jacobs um, couture thing I'm sure other designers do it but I took the Marc um, I watched the Marc Jacobs masterclass on masterclass and he had this unbelievable Italian wool and silk jacket and he said he wasn't going to put a buttonhole in the fabric. It had sequins and all kinds of stuff. So he would make a snap so that it it closes but you don't make a buttonhole. I mean I just thought that was so invaluable to me because I love a showy button. I love a showy button <laughs> and, and a very large one so you get the look without uh, the only other thing I added, I added covered shoulder pads, um, my shoulders slope, and this dress, uh, need, this jacket needed the um, additional support of a shoulder pad. So I just bought a shoulder pad form and covered it with the same fabric. Use my surgery, I do use my surgery, y'all. I know it doesn't seem like, but I used to. And um, it was a very easy make. There's no, there's just this very small facing on the inside. It's light. Um, the only other reservation I had on this was that I did not wash this Ankara fabric. I don't know how it escaped me. And afterwards I thought, sometimes you wash an Ankara fabric and it turns out being much lighter weight than you thought when the wax is out of it. Some people don't wash there. They want the wax in it. So, but when I washed it, it, it came out exactly like this. So I don't have to worry about the suit losing its integrity. All right, on this garment, I finally found the envelope <laughs> that went along with the instructions. It is very easy, very vogue, 8945. I am not sure whether or not this is still in the books, but I think it might be. Here is a line drawing. I did view B because I love a sleeve. I love a sleeve. And I did, um, I think two levels of it. I think you could do three, but I did um, two. Let me take it off its hanger. Sorry. Alrighty. And I have had so many positive comments about this. I will show how it looks in action over here. I think I took the picture on this very veranda, but it is a sheath dress, but it's very relaxed, but the sleeves are a showstopper. I did it in Ankara fabric. It's very cool. It's very light. I used a lap, sorry, I used a lap zipper closing so that it kind of covers over and hides my zipper on the inside. Um, it was a look very easy. You could whip this out in a in less than a day. You could whip it up in a couple hours if you had an occasion to wear it. It's a good one. Now this next dress 
is Gertie's L'Amour dress. Um, Gertie specializes in nostalgic dresses. Um, she likes to use a lot of boning and ultra feminine um, shapes in her dresses. I love her patterns and I've adapted them to me because I admire her models that she uses. She herself is very slim, but she has plus size models also modeling some of her things. Very attractive, very beautiful. So this is her L'Amour pattern. And I absolutely, oh, I'm showing you the back. I absolutely love them. Hopefully I'm showing you them over here so that you can see them in action. The only difference is I like to make them reversible. <laughs> so when you do that, sometimes I do like, they have a reversible zipper that you can buy, but um, I don't find that they're often, that the teeth on the zipper are attractive to me because if I do a large contrast between the front of the dress and the other dress on the inside, um, I don't want it to be distracted by the wrong color zipper. So in this case, I used the fuchsia pink as a little pop of surprise, but I added this catch on the top so that the zipper on the other side comes all the way up to the top, but this catch keeps the other side in place. All right? so. That's one thing going on with this dress. I will reverse it so you can see that there is another dress on the inside. And I love these, especially on holiday, because you can pack one dress that has two different looks and um, taking up less space. But it's such a party dress, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? It's an unbelievable Ankara that I've had for a very long time. The skirt is not a full circle, but it's very close. I think it's a full half circle in the front and it's only slightly reduced in the back. It is a lot of material. Uh, this uh, baby hem goes on forever. <laughs> so when you're sewing, you have to have patience. Now, because I'm extra, I love crinoline. I was not born in that era when uh, crinoline was a uh, big deal, but I love it. And so I made a crinoline underskirt and I'll stop the video and remove it from my dress so you can see how I did that. The crinolines are very easy to create. Uh, no, they're simple to create. They're not easy. <laughs> It's a lot of material, a lot of gathering, and you have to have a lot of patience when you're doing them, but the payoff is so great. So I start with these taped um, hook and eyes that I get from Ping's Fabric. Let's see if I can get these out for you. Right? So I use those, and when I do my reversible dress, I join the bodices at the waistline. I'll show you right now. All right, so I haven't really, I think I haven't cleaned out all the dresses on the inside yet. You know, when you go back and snip all your threads and everything. But what I do is I join the, um, the waistbands of both, once they're completed, of both bodices um, as they're attached to the skirt and I run in that seam allowance and maybe make it an inch seam allowance rather than five eighths. And I stitch the hook section facing down, right? Because I'm gonna hang the skirt on this, on the inside. It's important to um, attach the two bodices to give it the strength to support the crinoline on the inside. I would not, support it on like one half of the dress. And then also you need to pull the dress together. Now in this dress, I also, in, even though I did it a relaxed bodice, not as tight as Gertie would have done it, and I put boning in it, and it really gave it a nice smooth effect without being too constrictive for me, because I'm apple shaped. All right, so 
I add the hook and eye to the inside of the waistband of the dress, right? Where you can't see. So it makes it optional. If you were going to a party and you want to spin around and show your crinolines, fine. If you're going to a, like a, um, a garden party or going out to dinner and you don't want that much fuss, you can remove it. So now let me show you the crinoline. They're just fun. <laughs> Now this crinoline is not based on a particular pattern. It is inspired by patterns, but it's not based on a particular pattern because depending upon the dress, the way I make my crinolines, I use the skirt from the dress to tell me what kind of crinoline the dress is gonna need, okay? So I cut out of a um, black polyester mix kind of light because remember I do live in Jamaica if I do put a crinoline under there I don't want to be dying of heat so I copy the pattern of the of the dress and I take off however long I want my crinoline to be so in this case it's about eight inches so I trimmed eight inches off the skirt that I was going to attach it to all right now the crinoline you decide on the colors on your own i haven't even separated mine yet so my skirt isn't even at its full capacity and over here you can see how um how boisterous and joyful it is and i hadn't even done this yet when you separate it because then it's really crazy <laughs> but anyway so i gather the waist to fit the same waist as the dress you make. And this time I attach a bias tape, right, on one side and then on both sides. It's a double, it's it's the bias tape um, opened up, not opened up fully, face to face. It's not folded, it's face to face. See, that's how big it is, it's face to face. And I stitch them together first and then I add this tape on it so that it will match up and I finish the end because you have to leave an opening at the back to accommodate for the zipper right and then that's what I hook on to the skirt and like I said I haven't opened it fully yet I chose because the front and the, how I coordinated color, people ask me a lot how I put things together. I loved the blue and, and the gray and the yellow that was in one side. So the blue and the yellow, and then I loved the purple that was on the, the purple and the yellow that was on the other side. So I, I stacked my crinoline. Now, the crinoline, I'd say you're good with about two yards because you're cutting eight inch strips and you're gonna gather. And in some cases it wraps around and there's more and I attached it. Here's how it is attached, it's gathered and attached. So one side, yellow, blue, and purple, and the other side, purple, blue, and yellow. So it's an actually, the crinoline is on both sides of the skirt edge. One side has these three crinolines, the other side has that group, and it gives it a lot of lift, okay? If you're into it, if you're not, it's okay, it's okay. But that's what I did to make the crinolines for that skirt. It's a really luxurious effect. It's lovely at a party. My next pattern is Vogue 1102 by uh, uh, Andrea Katzo Objects. Um, she's a Vogue American designer. This is the line drawing. It attracted me because there's my little rectangle shape. And I have seen this on eBay, if you don't already have it in your own stash. Um, for the longest time, I wanted to make it. It is high waist. I know it's hard for you to see. So that's above my apple. All right, and so hopefully over here, you're seeing her in all her 
glory and I decided to make her reversible as well and add the crinoline. I will in the future at some time when I make another one of these dresses I will do a tutorial on how to make the crinoline. Um, I realize now it's kind of hard to um, describe without you actually seeing it. But this dress I've had for the longest time. This material, I beg your pardon, and it's a patchwork Ankara. So when it was Ankara week and they were asking if you had any showstoppers, I thought, this is the moment I'm going to finish this dress. I had cut it out a year or so before, but it was my first chance to use it because it was an exquisite Ankara. I did wash it so that wax is off of it. The colors were spectacular but I, I just couldn't figure out what to do with it. I just couldn't. And then I was walking through Pings and I saw this fabric and somehow, I don't know, I think it's the blue, the pink and the mauve and purple. And I thought I made the connection. So um, I always wanted to make that dress and I decided to make it reversible. I don't know how long I get to keep it, y'all. My daughter has already said, you can just go ahead and put those in my closet, mom. I'll be back for them in October. <laughs> I don't blame her. She's such a good model of my things. I'll show you a picture of her in the red and black and blue Spider-Man dress with crinoline that I had made. Now, I did not make it with a detachable crinoline. So I might be able to, if she brings the dress back, I might be able to to deconstruct the crinoline from it and show you how I um, make it. But I, it was not, it, that dress is not reversible. Anyway, so this is more of the same. As you can see by the bias, I'll go ahead and detach them and show you the crinoline up, up close. Now to repeat, what I did was I attached both bodice pieces to one another um, at the waistline and then, oh, excuse me guys, my allergies, I'm so sorry. Um, I added one piece of bias tape on one side of the, uh, one side of the bodice waistline and another on the other side. This is two, this is two facings. This is two um, bias tapes touching each other. And that, after I secure that to the waistline, then I add the hooks facing down, y'all, facing down. That has happened to me, facing down. <laughs> All right, and so that gives you one dress on one side. Let me turn it inside out. And another dress on the other side. And I believe I liked the zipper on this. I liked both of them. And also they're really covered by the ex exotic bow. So I'm pretty happy with that. I didn't do a separate catch. I guess I could. If I find a hook that a decorative cover for the top, I'll, I would attach it. Once again, I haven't really pulled them apart yet, but this was a special combination. Once again, I used the skirt as a pattern for the crinoline, the skirt that the dress came with, so that they match and line up. I take off of the hem how long I want the crinoline. If I want the crinoline to stick out from underneath the dress, I measure that, and then I cut away that part of the dress and add the crinoline on both sides of the dress. So there's crinoline on one side and there's crinoline on the other side. That's what gives it its volume. All right, now this is a combination. I'm trying to use up the things that are in my stash. So even though the colors, this is purple, this is purple mesh. This is pink, fuchsia, tulle. It's finer, more cloud-like, more ethereal. But the combination is not bad. It's really good, you know. So while the other dress that I showed you was all net, all mesh, all crinoline, um, this is a combination. It gives it a different look. And I'm hopefully, hopefully I've been showed it over here. If not, I'll show it again. It, um, it, it's, it gives it a different feel. 
So those are my two crazy showstopper dresses. This is new look 6435. Um, it is not in the pattern books any longer, but it had some wonderful pieces. It had the Mandarin collar, um, uh, Asian influence jacket. It had a shirt for underneath sleeveless, pants, and these bags. And it was the bags I was interested in. The bags took, let's see, um, da, 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 da. oh, A, B, E. Um, uh, five, uh, five eighths of a yard, so less than a yard. I had these wonderful fabrics that were left over from another project. And so because the bag has lining, you know it has to be reversible. <laughs> so one side has the fuchsia and the other side has the brown with the turquoise. Now, I've not stitched them yet because I have not figured out what kind of thread I'm going to use to influence that would work with both sides of the bag. But it's a nice little addition. It's a lovely evening uh, uh, takeout purse. Holds all your stuff, including your phone and everything. It's just very, very pretty. And I think that the handles, the bamboo handles, suit with the fabric. Now I feel like you've been along with me for the ride for McCall's 8245. This is a lounge set. A lounge set is a luxe lounge set. I don't think it's suitable for sleeping and I think all this fabric on the leg for me would make me feel um, wrapped up in but home by the fire, um, home for the day, not going anywhere. This is your set. The um, the jumpsuit, the romper, took four yards, 60 inches. They don't have any 45 inch modifications. And the robe and sash is three and a half um, yards. So we've been along for the ride for this. Now, I have made it in this sumptuous marigold or gold colored velour. All right, so this is the sash. Hold on, I think a hurricane's viewing up, blowing up. I will model the romper and the robe for you over here somewhere. But as you can see, it's a lot of fabric. It's super lovely. It's super lovely. I would suggest they you narrow stitch the armhole and you put the elastic in the neckline edges because you're going to step inside of the, um, the romper um, but on further like further knowledge what I would do the next time I make this I would put elastic in the underarm as well because it would keep it firm and keep it from sagging all right, so I regret that I didn't do it with this, but picking uh, thread out of the lore is not something I want to do. So I'm just going to use it as a word to the wise. It's sufficient for the next. I want this kind of effect on the armhole, you know, and so that's the only thing on this pattern I would change. It's a lovely pattern. It gives you a really quality um, product when you're done. It is not hard. It is relatively simple. Um, uh, your choice of fabric is what is going to make or break it. Just to show how versatile this pattern is, this is the velour. This is the ITY. Um, I did this one for my daughter in tie dye. It, you know, they have to be stretch and silver stars and it came out just as lovely. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be wearing it here. Um, different sizes, different heights. I, I could model this one, and I think I might be able to model the cranberry, but I don't know. I think my uh, daughter's five feet tall, so um, my youngest, so I might not be able to model this. I will try. If I can, I will insert it over here. 
Now, this is Vogue. Hold on, let me look. What I did with it. Yeah. This is Vogue 9237. I fell in love with this dress. While I was making three of these, which were in last month's makes, I had a pair of gold shoes. And I got this Ankara fabric that I brought from Canada. And I thought, ooh, those shoes need a dress. <laughs> so I decided to do this dress. The only changes I made, I will show myself wearing the dress right over here. And the only changes I made, instead of making a button loop, I decided that I wanted to use this pad, this zipper that had a little toggle on it. And I like the little exposed, I like the decorative zipper, but you know, you can't see it unless you get up, real up, up close. And I altered the pockets. The pockets were rather um, shallow and a little bit too tight for me. And I wanted to be able to put my phone inside. So I created my, I have a set of pockets that I keep and I, um, it's the pocket that's on that um, Ankara dress I made. Um, oh, I can't remember, nine, nine, nine something three eight. I think it's nine five three eight. It is that Vogue pattern that I made, the Icarus robe, the kaleidoscope dress, and the pineapple Ankara dress out of. And I took its pocket because its pocket is deep enough to hold my stuff because I need pockets. <laughs> this next make is the York Pinnifer by Helen's Closet. It's a PDF. I did this version for my daughter. She's a gardener and she loves dungarees at or or um, overalls as we say in the States. And I thought she would like this. This is a lovely jumper. I had a blue poplin, heavy weight for outside and everything. And I combined it with this unbelievable um, bias binding, which is recommended in the pattern. And then I added this embroidery that my machine, my machine comes with because I finally get to use some of these embroidery things. Um, wish I bought more cassettes, but at the time they were very expensive and I had kids at soccer camp and um, university, things like that. So I don't have too many of them, but this one cartridge I bought, I do love a lot. And the original cartridge that comes with the machine had a lot of wonderful um, embroidery motifs. All right. And so gigantic pockets, gigantic pockets, so that she can drop her gloves or whatever she's wearing when she's out there puttering in her backyard. And I've had several questions about this binding. They sell it at my local store at Ping's. No, they don't have an online presence. No, they do not ship. And no, they do not order. Whatever shows up there, they sell it till it's gone. More's the pity. This next make is McCall's 8145. It wasn't in my plans. It's a living toile or a living muslin. I made it up in this black interlock. No, not interlock. Well, maybe. Because I wanted to fit it and see if it would work over um, my skirts and such. And it was such a great fit that I can't wait to use it. I really, really, even though it went so well with um, all of my skirts and things like that, what I really want is you see this striped version. I bought a crazy fabric wall. And I wanted to find something to showcase that crazy fabric. And then I did the living toile to see if it would work. I'll show you the fabric. This is a lace, an ecru stripe, stretch lace. And it has scallops at the end. So I really was looking for something where I could use it. I don't know why I bought it, y'all. You know how that fabric mart is. They have one of those $1.99 sale and everything makes sense to you. <laughs> so I bought it and then when it came, I thought the mo I thought it was gonna be narrower. 
but it wasn't. And so I thought, well, I guess I'm gonna hold on to it for a few years like I do with other things. But then this pattern came along with these and that and this. And I thought, I'll take a chance. But I wanted to see if it would fit first. This looks like it's gonna be a wonderful addition. I'm gonna make many more of this because this fits right on top of my, my little short waist itself. This fits right on top of a lot of my um, skirts. Hopefully I'll show you me wearing them on some of my wrap skirts, you know, my double-sided wrap skirts. Um, I'll model them and insert them right here so you can see how well this pattern does on top. I've decided not to add elastic because I want it to float free because this is Jamaica. Let me see if I can give you a view of what I'm talking about. Okay, it's hot here. I know it's hot where y'all are, but it's hot here. <laughs> Hi, the wind finally ran me off the veranda um, storm came through. So let me finish with another make. This is the Rose Claire by Oh, hold on. It's the Rose Claire by Cashmere. This, it's a PDF. And it is a loose fitting wrap dress. Now I did have to alter it because when I went to make this longer version, I ran out of body. I'm too short for the full <laughs> length. So I took a tear out. So this is me wearing it right here. It's a luxurious fabric um, done in this cranberry uh, velour or satin kind of velvet. I absolutely love how sumptuous it is and how beautiful it is. And I'm sure it will be wonderful in the fall and the winter in another country. <laughs> well, I'm going for a visit, so I'll, I'll make sure I wear it, but it's, it's, it's lovely. Maybe I'll lounge in it because it's so beautiful. And I used to have all the occasions to wear it, but not so anymore but it turned, it was a beautiful make. Now, this is that fabric that I used to make the robe and the romper for my daughter and did not wash this fabric. Bad, Anne-Marie, bad, and I paid for it. My plate on my sewing machine is cranberry. And uh, so tomorrow, since I've completed all those makes, I'm gonna put all of these in the washing machine on cold and see if it comes out and is as sumptuous as this. I'll let you know. All right, it was a glorious month. It was a great month. So many um, challenges, so many great projects. I hope you enjoyed following along with my makes. I hope you got to make some makes too. And I hope you got a chance to um, Express yourself artistically in whatever way it is. Maybe you read very well. Maybe you nap majestically. <laughs> it all counts. It all counts. Keep making and we'll see you soon.